Welcome back. We are at the day three of Unrigged the System Summit. Jeff Powers, Lindsay France, good to have hey you there. with us again. And we have a, another special guest, don't we? Yes, one of many and uh, very connected to a man who's been a hot topic here because when he ran for president, it brought to light a lot of issues with the rigged system. Boy, did it ever. Yeah, just he, one person who brought that to light. Nick Branna is here, and at the time, he was uh, running the national outreach for the Bernie Sanders. He'll correct me if I got any of that wrong, but <laughs> the national outreach for Bernie Sanders campaign, he was in charge of that. And now that, that movement has transitioned into a new movement, um, which is called the, um, let me get this right, Movement for a People's Party. And he is the founder of that movement. Nick Brenna is kind enough to join us. Hi, Nick. Yeah, hey. It's hey. Great to be here. Thanks for having Glad me. You're great to have you. What do you think about this event? Enjoying it? Oh, I think it's been fabulous. Uh, coming here, you know, as Movement for a People's Party, our aim is to build a coalition for a major new party. Many different organizations, including organized labor, different uh, progressive organizations. Uh, different academics, you know, student groups, all kinds of community groups. And coming here has been so inspiring because I've seen so much interest in doing just that. Like the, the Millennial Roundtable we participated in, it was like every other question and every other comment was about building a new party. So it's fabulous. What about, so you were, you were, for lack of a better yeah, word, knee deep in it, right? I mean, you really were and you saw this delegate fight, and you saw the super delegate issues, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> you could call it that. <laughs> I mean, look, I, <laughs> what I, I can't imagine what you guys were going through in that campaign. I can't imagine the frustration. Um, and I got to credit Bernie Sanders because he really towed the line. He could have, you know, it could have gotten uglier than it did. Let's just put it that way. How did you guys? wade through that and what were the lessons you learned? I How guess? are you still alive with that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the non-PC way of putting it. How, to, yeah. how did you survive, Nick? Uh, yeah, so my job on the Bernie campaign, I was the National Political Outreach Coordinator, and so my job was to reach out to the superdelegates, you know, after Bernie went out there, trashed the party, day, you know, day in and day out, deservedly so, you know, for not representing working people. And my job was to then tell them, no, but Bernie still wants your support as a super delegate, you know? And so, <laughs> obviously not the easiest job in the world, you know? And it's part of actually what led me and other Bernie staffers and other Bernie delegates and volunteers who joined us in founding Movement for a People's Party to what we're doing now, is we saw that the Democratic Party is so entrenched that with the donor class, that they would rather lose than allow a progressive to win. And so, you know, that led us to the conclusion that we really need different choices, you know, because to replace them and at the very least to, to force them uh, into recognizing that they can no longer do, you know, play the same game of ignoring working people. And I've got to ask, again, I keep asking people this who, from, mm. from every political persuasion uh, who I come across here, have followers of Bernie and certainly people, for instance, at the round table who want to form this new movement, this new party, have they accepted the fact that they also have to be able to sit down and have coffee with maybe a conservative who also wants to fix yeah. certain portions of the system? They don't, is there an acceptance of that and, and going, okay, we got to embrace this Good now, question. Guys. Yeah, there, so there is, absolutely. And so that's one of the things that Bernie did so well. And one of the ways in which he really paved the way for a new nationally viable third party. And that is, you know, that it won't be, it won't pigeonhole itself as progressive in identity. But as Bernie showed that, you know, at Liberty University, in, in West Virginia, in town halls, he showed that you can communicate to conservatives uh, and, and work with them in a way that shows that really this is, you know, beyond partisan affiliation. I mean, conservatives, independents, Democrats, uh, people in the Green Party, Libertarian Party, you know, just across the spectrum, political spectrum, they're all affected by the fact that they, they lack, you know, health care, that they can't afford it, that they can't, uh, they don't have access to affordable education, higher education either. You know, they're all affected by the fact that our democracy is right. essentially for sale. Same problems, point. different solutions, doesn't mean the other person is the devil. So what, right? right. Is that what you, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So what is it um, that you hope to accomplish? And maybe talk a little bit about what you hope to accomplish here at this summit. Yeah. But what, is, what does the 2018 election look like? What does that look like for you? 
Well, what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to get national, this national party off the ground with the coalition of labor, many other groups uh, that are now breaking from the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, just breaking from the duopoly right. as a whole, and get that started by 2020. You know, and it involves also working with existing progressive political parties and existing uh, anti-establishment parties, just in general, anti-duopoly parties. Is that promoting independent candidates? Is that, yeah. in other words, how, how does that how does that materialize? Yeah, how is that going to appear on the landscape? Yeah, and so it will start in the states that are the most friendly towards independent politics. You know, states like Maine and Colorado, and having state conventions there. Uh, moving towards a national convention as well that brings together delegates essentially from across the country uh, allows people to craft a new platform based on what the majority of Americans are looking for at this point uh, the issues that pull the highest among Americans all the kinds of democracy reform issues that we've talked about here at Unrig, you know getting money out of politics eliminating gerrymandering moving towards ranked choice voting all those things uh, at a founding convention or platform a name everything else will be determined you know? excellent what do you uh, yeah. if people are want to get in, involved and, and want to get to know your organization yeah. how do they go about doing that uh, so you can go to for people's party mm -hmm. uh, dot org is that for uh, it, and that is a uh, it's spelled out the okay. uh, the letters yeah so for a people's party dot org and you can come join us you can volunteer there uh, join nice. us in building the next party essentially the next American party, that the, the country is so primed for this at this point. Like we heard yesterday, 46% of Americans are independents, 27% mm -hmm. are Democrats, 25% are Republicans, and even out of those 27% they who are Democrats need a home. Republicans. They just need a home. Exactly. Right? What, what, what I find most It's like an army without a home. It, it is. It's already, it already dwarfs the major parties. Yeah. You know? And even half of those, this Gallup poll last year revealed that half of those who call themselves Democrats and Republicans, even the ones who haven't left yet, half of them are saying that their party does such a poor job that we need a major third party. So you add that 46%, you know, plus half of the people who remain, and it's just overwhelming right. at this point. When you've got 10% plus of uh, Bernie supporters flipping over to Trump when he dropped out, that is an anti-vote. You know, that is an anti-the exactly. other candidate vote. Absolutely. That's not necessarily a for this candidate People vote. are That's running scary. from one direction to They're the other, away. just looking for an escape hatch from establishment politics, right. you know. and. Well, we're about to pull the escape hatch right now, but we appreciate your time, Nick. We really do. Oh, Thank it's you. Been great to talk to you. Thank you yeah. so much for for taking a few moments. We really appreciate it. And best of luck to your incredible new position and, and your posted. new movement. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Love your guys' work. Thank you, Nick. Nick Brana with uh, tremendous opportunities, as he said. The time is right for this right to, to happen. I mean, I re you really do feel it's not just. And yeah, that's just rhetoric, right? That, that it yeah. really is the time. Well, and he's been in the trenches too. Can you imagine? I couldn't. I I I I, I couldn't imagine dealing with what they were dealing no, with no. Um, on the DNC side with with Hillary and the yeah. super delegates and the delegates when their guy was clearly leading and winning states. And then they. I digress. <laughs> We agree. We agree. I think we're all in agreement. Yeah. So we're going to have a couple more guests, and I think we're going to wrap up the yeah. final day here of uh, on Tulane University um, from New Orleans, Louisiana. We will be right back.